Depending on your source, it's either located in Penville or Somerville, Georgia. Regardless, it's in a remote location north of Atlanta. If you're brave, you can ask for directions at the local pool hall. For over 10 years, I'd had it as a goal to get to Paradise Gardens. I imagined it in the middle of nowhere, a folk art mecca full of outdoor displays of wooden paintings, like I'd seen in an art book from the 80s, but more on that later. So maybe the place could never live up to my expectations. It even surprised me that it was in the middle of a quiet residential neighborhood. But Paradise Gardens is a pilgrimage any Howard Finster fan should consider taking. Looking like a covered bridge on the outside, a long hallway has been constructed. Inside, it's loosely decorated with various relics, art, and graffiti from visitors. The creator of Paradise Gardens has been a preacher, a bike repair man, an artist. He even plays the banjo. He gained notoriety doing album covers. The Talking Heads cover captures more of his style, his trademark cathedrals, angels, smiling clouds, and leopards. He also does wooden cutouts and paintings that are in folk art museums all over the world. Paradise Gardens was built over time in the 60s and 70s. It's become what's known as a folk art environment. Out back are inlaid walls, built with the help of volunteers and grandkids. Legend has it someone donated their tonsils in a jar to be cemented in the walls, which include broken bits of everything you can imagine. The rest of this boggy backyard is full of folky, junk sculpture, crude and kinetic.
The hand-built chapel is the centerpiece of the garden. While it may resemble a rickety cake, it glorifies its surroundings, making them more than just an assemblage of old buildings. One of the more humorous sights in the garden is this wall of weathered velvet art paintings. This message explained what happened to the old paintings that had hung in the garden. They'd been stolen or sold due to weathering. The phrase extraordinarily eccentric used to describe Finster appealed to me, as did the tales of his energized painting sessions that had him working late into the night, numbering each painting, inscribing them with biblical messages, and including the time he finished the artwork on the painting. I've heard that he believed if you never took your shoes off, you didn't have to sleep as much. Finster was inspired by God. In a video I saw, he talked about having a vision. After having dipped his finger in paint, he looked at it, and a face appeared that told him to paint sacred art, and he's been doing it ever since. Finster had his busiest times in the 80s. But now that he's in his 80s, he's slowed down. He no longer lives on the property, but he greets visitors each week on Sunday afternoons. And you can find him at Finsterfest, the folk art festival held each May at Paradise Gardens. According to Atlanta Magazine, he makes his arrival in a hearse.